Close the door. Alec Python. Now look, I've been wanting to hear from you. Cool it, friend. It's okay for you, Mike, but time getting short. Look, I said cool it. No, I want to see you, and you know why, don't you? Well, I can guess. When are Car park off Eaton High Street, 11.30. Well, I'm not sure I can manage. Well, bring that movement schedule. Just leave things to me, boy. Now, look, I can't do a thing without it, you know. What's the matter? Don't you trust me or something? Well, if I don't get it soon, they'll change the route. No, they won't. Just leave it to me. 11.30, OK? Right. Joan, get me Mr. Williams' Western Security, will you? Ah, good morning. Good morning. Are you the proprietor? Yeah, yes, that's right, Marker. How did you come in? Yeah, take a seat. Uh, I might be here. Might? Well, it depends what it is, you know, whether I think I can help or not. I see. What are your charges? Six pounds thirty a day, plus expenses. Expenses? Your travel expenses, research expenses, gratuities, depends upon the nature of the job. Really. Why don't you tell me what it's all about, and I'll tell you what you might be in for. Well, my husband is a police officer, and he's being victimised. Ah, police officer. Well, it's, uh, it's a bit out of my line, really. Your services aren't available for policemen. Oh, no, 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 I don't mean that. It's just that it's, well, it's unusual to be asked, you know. Well, you're being asked now. Very well, then, Mrs... Uh... Holland, uh, Jane Holland. Oh. Well, let's hear all about it, then. A week ago, my husband found a purse in the street and handed it in at the station. The woman's address was inside, so they telephoned her. When she came to collect it, she said four pounds was missing. They suspended my husband immediately. Pending the result of an inquiry, yeah? Yeah, well, it sounds a bit tough, I know, but it isn't exactly what I'd call victimisation. Uh, well, just before this happened, my husband saw one of his senior officers in a bar with a man he knows to be a criminal. Well, is that so very unusual, I mean, for a police officer? The officer who suspended my husband is the same one he saw in the bar. What are you trying to tell me, Mrs Holland? Well, when he got back to the station, he called my husband into his office and told him never to mention it to anyone. Ah, yes, well, before you start jumping to conclusions, I think... Your husband didn't you... take that money. No, but I'd have to see him. Your husband, I mean. Oh, of course. When? Well, I could come around this morning, um, between half past eleven and twelve. Fine. Ah. Here's the address. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll see you then. Oh, Mrs. Holland, just one more thing. Yeah? Uh, this police officer your husband suspects. Yes? Who is he? Detective Inspector Furbank. Um, I've run out of coffee. Wanted feeling. Yeah, well, some of us have to work for a living, you know. For a job. I don't sound so surprised. It does happen from time to time. No, I'm glad. A rich old widow. I'm not sure. But if she's rich or if she's a widow? If I'm going to take the job. Oh, why shouldn't you? But I don't have to take every job that's offered, do I? Well, do I?
Bit of a risk, isn't it, meeting here? I don't see it. Well, it wouldn't have been better to meet at my place. Why create suspicion where none need exist? Well, isn't that just what we're doing? Your psychology's all wrong, Peyton. You're a villain and I'm a policeman. I'm just going about my professional business meeting okay, you here. OK, look, all right, where is it? You're getting impatient, Alec, my lad. Well, I've got arrangements to make. I'll have the route for you within 24 hours. Well, I need a day to set it up. Don't worry, boy. Stick it in there. Two fifty. That's what we said. Thanks. I'll be in touch. Why are you being so enigmatic? What? For not telling. It's not a question of not telling. I'm just not sure I'm going to take the job. That's all. But tell me about it, and I'll advise you. Come on, I've got to lock up. I still feel very uneasy about it, love. I really do. Look, you need help. You're as much entitled to it as anyone else is. They won't like it. Fairbank won't like it. Listen to me, David. If you do what they want, they'll just walk all over you. But if you stand up for yourself, they won't think any less of you for it. <laughs> they'll respect you. Yeah, but going to a man like this, a private inquiry agent... Oh, really? You do irritate me sometimes. I mean, can't... Why can't you accept that it's either you or them? Can't you see that? Are you so sure it's going to be like that? Well, of course I'm sure. I wouldn't push you like this otherwise. Darling, I hate to see you worried and unhappy, but the only way out of this is to prove your innocence. And I honestly think Mr Marker is your only way. Well, they won't give you a fair hearing. That'll be him now. Right. Uh, uh, Mr. Holland, um, uh, my name's Marker. Oh, yes, uh, do come in, Mr. Marker. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Your wife tells uh, if me you like to come in here. Huh? I'll make some tea. Oh, I'm sorry to hear you've been... Now, why don't you sit down, Mr. Marker? Over there. Well, about this money. I didn't take it, Mr. Marker. Are you quite sure that there was no money in the purse when you found it? Well, there was, but only change. No notes, no four pounds. Ah. I told you that. Oh, yes, uh, and did they empty it in front of you at the station? Yes. There were definitely no notes. So you would say it was stolen before you ever picked it up? Exactly. What do you mean, you would say? Just a minute, Mrs. Holland. Let me do this my way. If it was stolen, now have you checked with the woman who lost it? Oh, you must do that. He mustn't go near her. Influencing witnesses, you see. Ah, yes, yes. You think, do you, that Inspector Furbank is, um, crooked? Well, I know the villain he met, Alec Payton. He's had several convictions, wage snatches, GBH, that sort of thing. Mr Furbank called me into his office and warned me never to talk about what I'd seen. And he didn't give you any explanation? No. A few days later, this purse business happened. Furbank suspended me without even asking for my statement. And is that unusual? Oh, it's victimisation. It's Thank unusual, you. yes. Yeah, but if what you say is true, they can't ever convict you. There's no evidence. Oh, do you seriously think Furbank will let him off the hook, knowing David saw him? Well, I still don't see why you need an inquiry agent. We want you to prove he's innocent of the theft. Oh, blind all right. Well, what else could we do? You could have gone to the chief constable, told him about Furbank. <laughs> you can't be that naive. I'm suspended for alleged theft. It would look as if I were deliberately trying to draw red herrings. All right, but what do you want me to do? Prove that you didn't take the money, or prove that Furbank is a bent copper? To prove his innocence, you must show the real reason why Furbank suspended him. Oh, how do you expect me to do that? Well, that's your business, isn't it? <sighs> but look, I could take your money, spend a whole week and get nowhere. There's something very wrong, Mr Marker. I'm sure you can find out what. I just don't want to take your money for nothing. I tell you what, let me nose around a bit. And if I can find anything to back up your husband's story, I'll take the job. Miss Marker? Huh? Do you know Detective Inspector Furbank? Mm, I've met him, yeah. A personal friend? No, no, not a personal friend. If you don't take this case, we'll all know why. Now, just a minute, Mrs. Holland. Should... 
If I take your husband's job, it'll be because I think I can help. If I don't take it, it'll be because I don't think I can help, and there are no other implications. Thanks. Keep it back, up. Frank. Oh. <laughs> what do you have? No, it's all right. Have a scotch. Oh, no, I'm just going to... Large scotch, home. please. What's this, then? Uh, celebration? Anniversary. Uh, payday as well, by the look of it. Well, easy come, easy go. <laughs> What's the matter? Work problems, then? Mm, yes. Yes, you could say that. Well, get that down here, then. And I'll have another, Ted. I see I'm in the wrong job. Never pleaded poverty, did I? No, no. Cheers. Cheers. What's this terrible problem you've got, me? Well, it's not for publication, really. Oh? Well, uh, don't name names. Just give me a for instance. Well, you know what it's like when somebody you know gets involved in your work. It happens. I mean, I'm being asked to believe that somebody I know is bent. Queer? No, 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 that sort of bent. The, the other bent, crooked. Sounds more like a job for me. No. No, no, not for you. Well, if it ever gets that... Oh, yes, yes, of course. Until then, just stick to the facts. Forget your personal feelings. Just stick to the facts. It's the only way. No, yes, I suppose it is. Damn sure it is. There's a case in the paper not long ago. A policeman was charged with taking money from a thief for um, looking the other way. That must be a bit embarrassing for you, that sort of thing. I don't embarrass that easy. Oh, you reckon it's got nothing to do with you, then? He was useless to the job. But did you know him? I don't have to. You see, to be a good copper, you've got to have the mind of a villain. Think the way they do. Well, he wasn't good enough at it. Well, he got caught, didn't he? <laughs> I guess. You do want a cup? You persuaded me. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> there. The cup that cheers. Actually, you look as though you need cheering. Yeah, well, life, you know, doesn't get any easier. Oh, how true. You'd know that, would you? I was going to offer you a biscuit. Oh, come on, try me. Did you take that case? No, no, I'm thinking about it. It's so, Oh, these are hard. Did you never think of becoming a real detective? Real? Joining the police? Mm, no. Oh. Have to have large feet, I suppose. Actually, yours don't look too bad. What do you mean? Well, they're big enough. I dare you, those feet are size eight. Nines. Nine? How interesting. You really want to know about this job? If you want to tell me. I don't think I ought to take it. If I take it, it's going to be bad for me. You mean it might have repercussions on you personally? All right. Oh, I see. You see, my client is pointing the finger at someone I know. Oh, well, thanks for the tea anyway. It's my pleasure. Will you take the job? Well, um, I'm going to follow it up.
and you want to see that? Ah. Good morning, sir. Ah. <laughs> well, there you are, already in waiting. Ah. Twin carburetors, automatic, the lot. Well, it feels all right. But then it should, shouldn't it? 1,738, wasn't it? 1,758, Mr. Furman. <laughs> well, a good try, anyway. How much for mine? I'm sorry to have taken your time. Uh, but I expect we can dispose of it through the trade. How much? Well, uh, uh, 170. Goodbye. Uh, 185. 200. Come to my office, will you, Mr. Fairbank? Excuse me. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. I'm looking for something um, a bit sporty. Well, yes, of course, sir. What kind of price range? Oh, about 1500 2000 odd thereabouts, you know. My dear sir, at that kind of price, I'm sure that we can help you. You had a dark red Rover 2000 here. Maroon? How very extraordinary. We've just this minute sold it. Ah, oh, dear. What a shame. What a shame. But I'm sure we can find you another one in very short order if you're set on it. Cash sale, was it? I beg your pardon? Well, I mean, if it's on the never-never, if your customer finds the payments a bit, um, you know, I could always take it off his hands. A perfectly extraordinary thing to say. Well, you never know these days, do you? The gentleman who bought it was a very respectable person. Moreover, a question of higher purchase does not arise. And now, my dear sir, if you are genuinely interested in buying a car, I haven't got a silver cloud, I suppose, have you? Hello, M Mrs. Holland. Marker here. Oh, yes, Mr. Marker. Mrs. Holland, the lady who lost the purse, have you still got her address? I'm going to tell you a story about Harry, the little red engine. Still, still, Once upon a time, there was a little wooden engine called Harry. And every morning, Harry would be unsteady. And he would go out his chair. Chuff. Until he was Bless ready to my go. soul, Selina. Then the guard would blow his whistle, and Harry would go. Every day, except Saturday and Sunday, of course. Mr. Love, the station. Uh, Mrs. Durrant. Yes. Well, I tried the bell around the front. Oh, he, he, it doesn't work. Uh, but it's about your purse. You, you know, you lost it. The police found it. Oh, yes. Come in, then. Thank you. There would be huffing and a huffing. Come up here to feed the little red house anyway. Came round the bend and I hope I'm not disturbing you. Oh, no, 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 no. Just, just feeding my babies. 
Oh, I see. They're set to company. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Uh, now, about your purse. And all the passengers for Nutwood Junction got off. Uh, you found the money? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. It's just, well, you know, four pounds is a lot to lose. Yes, yes, of course. Mm. Have you ever lost any money before? Oh, no, never. I'm always very careful. That, well, there's not a lot to spare, you no, see. No, of course not. Can I help you? Oh, thank you very much. You sure the money was in the purse, are you? Oh, yes, I, I'm positive. And it was just the four pounds that was taken, not, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. not the loose change. No, no, that's right. Seems strange, doesn't it? I mean, you'd think they'd take it all, wouldn't you? You would, really, yes. The trouble with some people is, well, they're, they're just not tidy. Mm. Ah. Ah. What about the policeman who found the purse? Do you think he may have stolen the money? Oh, no, no, indeed not. Oh, why are you so sure? Oh, well, I don't think a policeman would do a thing like that. Well, his senior officer seems to think he may have. Oh, but that's nonsense. Surely you don't believe that? Well, I haven't any opinion one way or the other. But you should. Here you are. Uh. Uh, I, I would be most unhappy to think of that young man in trouble. Yes. yes look, Mrs. Tarrant, if anything crops up, Everything occurs to you, you know what I mean? If I leave you a card, would you telephone me? Yes, certainly, but uh, I really don't see what else I can say. No, no, I'm sure, but just in case something does crop up, oh. you know? I must say they're very lucky. Oh? They're having a cage each. Well, we can't have them in the same cage, can we? No. Heaven knows what they might get up to. Oh, she's quite certain that the money was in the purse. Not when I found it. But she doesn't think you took it. She doesn't think a copper is capable of such a thing. I suppose she just said there was four pounds in it. Oh, no, I don't think so. Why not? Well, just don't think she would. Why are you so sure? Well, I'm not sure. It's just I don't think she would, that's all. You're not sure about me, are you? Mr Holland, I'm not sure about anybody. Look, if I had stolen that money, do you honestly think I would have handed the purse in afterwards? Oh, you could have just thrown it in a dustbin. And nobody could ever have connected him with it. All right, then. I'll do what I can. Would you like some tea, Mr Marker? Yes, thank you. Oh, sorry. Vehicle registration, L Lima, A Applebee's. Hello, this is Detective Constable Brown here, Thames Valley Constabulary. A registered owner, please. Oldsmobile Saloon, PLA 3E. Quick as you can, please. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, yes. Best value plastics. Where is that? Thank you. Windsor 68242. Mrs. Holland? Yes. Detective Inspector Furback. Can I have a word with your husband, please? Mrs. Holland? Uh, just a minute. It's Furbank. Yes, sir? I think we ought to have a chat about this purse business. Oh, yes. Uh, shall I come to your office, sir? I think that will be best. Well, this afternoon, sir. The sooner the better. It's not looking good. Oh? I think there may be an answer, though. Oh, what's that, sir? A compromise, Holland. A good old British compromise. Oh, I was just about to leave. Yes, I'm sorry we're so late, Mr. Marker. Oh, well, something happened. We want to drop the case. Drop it? But, but I've hardly started. If you could tell us what we owe you. Well, an explanation, I should think. Six guineas a day, wasn't it? Plus expenses. No, no expenses, just the one day. Well, so what came up? It doesn't matter now, does it? Well, just to me. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Yes, so you keep saying. Have, have you been reinstated or something? Uh, no. Well, you badger me until I take the job, and a few hours later you can't drop me fast enough. Why? That's the end of it. Oh, no, it isn't. Not for me, it isn't. It's would love to be. No, no, wait a minute. Have they found the money? No. But what about Furbank? What about him? What's he up to? We don't know. Or care. Or care. Oh, that's great. Well, look, I'm going to find out what's happened if I have to ask Furbank himself. Oh, we've just left him. Oh, you have? Well, all right, then, what did he say? That's none of your business. Have you done a deal with him? No, 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 it's not like that, Well, Mr. then Martin. what is it like? You might as well tell him. I've resigned from the force. And? But you're half of the deal. What do you get? He will drop the theft charge. So everybody's happy? Yes. He's conned you. He's got rid of you. You're getting in his way, so he's got rid of you. He's got what he wanted. And we got what we wanted. Yes. Look, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Aren't we all, mate? Hello, Mark here. Firebank. The Holland's lab. But have you been issued with a crystal ball? Look, I want to see you now. I'll be in my office. God almighty! Alec, mm. all systems go, eh? Shut it. <sighs> Sit down. So, your tame cobber came up with the goods, then? You worry about the transport. Leave the rest to me. Right? Now, listen. We want a 1500 white band first. Then for the... Yeah, I've got them. You got what? In a lock-up in Chertsey, Nick, last week, four transit jag and a cresta. Well, we'll use the van for the snatch, but get rid of the others. I don't like joyriding in locomotives. Well, do me a favour, Alec. I wasn't born yesterday. I'll change the plates. Dump them, my son. I want our cars nicked on the morning of the job from the commuter car park in Kingston Railway Station. <sighs> it's your show, Alec. Well, use your head. This way, we can have them cars back before they're even missed. Just seems a lot of trouble for nothing, that's all. Look, Stocky, I haven't been nicked for eight years, and for why? Because I do my own work. OK, Alec, all right. And when you take them, make sure the good starters and I've got full tanks. Look, do me a favour. I'm not an amateur. I've nicked motors before, you know. And I've seen men inside because they use duff motors. Yeah, well, I know what I'm doing. And so do I. Look, I was doing time when you were still wetting your pants. All right, then, let's get down to work, shall we? Yeah, OK. I wondered what you were talking about in the pub. Well, now you know. Yeah. Now, look. They paid you off, dropped the case, right? Well, they said what you told them to say, or rather she did. Bright girl, that. Yeah, bright as nails. Just what he needs. You didn't get me here to talk about the Hollands, did you? No, I just want to make sure you understand the position. Oh, I'd like to. Right. 
The case is closed. Drop it. Is that all you're going to tell me? That's all you need to know. Drop it and you'll stay out of trouble. Well, that sounds like a threat. I'd just be sensible. So one or two things about this that just don't add up. Perhaps I didn't make myself clear. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, you did. But you see, your name has been mentioned. Price of fame. Yes, but we'll see. Look, I'm warning you now. If you don't drop it, you'll be in real trouble. Don't want another spell inside, do you? What did he want? Pardon? Well, you know who that is, don't you? Yes, Inspector Furbank. But did he buy something? Yes, an anniversary present for his wife. What? A bed warmer. And I'm serious. So am I. Long-handled Victorian. Well, what on earth would she do with that? Warm the bed. What, in this day and age? Well, perhaps she'll hang it on the wall. That sounds an odd thing to buy a woman. He said she'd wanted one for years. I don't understand that. Oh, I can. I mean, sometimes a woman gets a yen for something completely impractical. Why? Nothing, just to have it. Hey, how much was it? Fifteen pounds. Ridiculous. Fair price. Anyway, why are you so interested? I just, uh... Can I ask you a question? Hmm, yeah, I suppose so. It is your turn. Well, this case of yours doesn't involve Inspector Fairbank, does it? Because if it does, I can see what you mean about it perhaps being bad for you. Am I right? You, well, you're not wrong. Well, then, for heaven's sake, give it up. Yes, well, as a matter of fact, it's given me up. Oh, there you are. I'm damned if I'm going to leave it like that. Look, I've got something for you. Oh, I can't go below two and a half, Sam. I mean, that wouldn't cover design costs, let alone labour and materials. Get away. Look, I mean, I'm running a plastics factory, not a charity. Well, OK, Sam. Well, you come back to me when you can't get it elsewhere, all right? Mark. Mr. Payton. Right, first time. My name's Marker. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Marker? I'm looking for a job. Sorry. Unless you're a mechanic. No, no, but, uh... I can turn me on to most things, you know what I mean? Can't be done. A mate gave me your name. In Winston Green. I thought you'd been inside. What? You can tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose you can. Uh, he said you sometimes do some recruiting. Who was this gent with the huge mouth? Well, in there, he was known as Ralph Abbott. Never heard of him. I knew you. So do a lot of them. I can handle a motor. I've driven on one or two jobs. Oh, these days, everyone drives. I can't handle one of these. But you said you weren't a mechanic. Or have I uh, misunderstood you, my friend? Yeah. I tell you what I do. I'll leave you my number. Don't bother. I don't recruit strangers. Pity. Thanks anyway. What for? Furbank, Alec Payton. Listen, have you ever heard of a fella called Marker? You can't take a warning, can you, boy? 
just don't like being ordered about, that's all. It's quite simple. All you're being asked to do... Order to do. ...is to keep your nose out of my affairs. That's not too much to ask now, is it? No. Not if it's honest business. Even if it's not, Sonny. Uh, Hollands, tell me you're bent. I saw you give something to a man called Peyton, a known villain. You pay something approaching two grand for a new car. Suddenly you're buying presents, drinking large scotches. What am I to think? Ma, you have been busy. You take me for a fool? You think if I'd been taking money, I'd splash it around? I don't know. But you got rid of Holland, didn't you? Why? Marker, today you went to see Peyton. So? You offered your services to him. Your services as a professional criminal. Well, you know why. And that's no crime. If you push me, boy, or I'll find a charge that fits. And that's a promise. You keep out of my affairs and stay out. I won't say this again. Yes, yes. Well, I thought I ought to tell you. Well, tell me what, Mrs. Dunn. I've told the police people already, you see. You were very naughty, you know. I thought you were a policeman when you called. I thought I left you my card. Well, it's just as well you did, or I could not have telephoned you. Mm, no, Mrs. Dunn, I'm, I'm just about Be to start quiet, my answer. darling. Uh, sorry, what was that you said? Oh, no, not you, Mr. Marker. It's Selina. She is so noisy. Uh, well, look, Mrs. Dunn, I'm just about to begin well, my I, lunch. I, 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 no, I don't really. What? Uh, from the vet. It, uh, well, I let it go on a bit and it mounted up. You devil. Uh, nasty habit bills have. Yes, four pounds. Four pound? Yes. What, the four pound? Yes. The four pounds you thought were in your purse? Yes, that's right. It's so silly of me, but it's not a regular bill, you see, so I quite forgot that I'd paid the money. Anyway, I... I thought I ought to tell you. Yeah, I'm very glad you did. Thank you very much, Mrs. Dunn. I'm very much obliged. Goodbye now. Moving out, are you? Oh, well, it's a police house. We have to leave. Hello, Mr. Marker. Hello. What do you want? Uh, I've just had a phone call from Mrs. Durrant. What'd she have to say? Oh, uh, well, she's found the money. Found it? Oh, she found out what happened to it. She paid a bill with it. I forgot she'd paid it, I suppose. Yeah, she only came across the receipt today. Well, that's that, then. Well, aren't you pleased? 
We knew David was innocent. Doesn't make any difference to us. Oh. You can get your job back. No, thanks. I don't want to go back. Are you sticking to the deal with Furbank, are you? It suits us. Oh, well, I'm wasting my time now. Oh, we appreciate your interest, Mr. Marker. Hey, wait a minute. The police would never have made you move out at such short notice. We're going to my parents' place in Bradford. The removal people have won a week's warning at least. Have you got a job to go to? I'm going to work for Jane's father. He was offered the job when we were first married. But no. Well, he's earned sense now. Yes. So have I. You set this whole thing up, didn't you? Oh, no, just a minute. After Mr. he got suspended, you decided he ought to leave the police force. But you didn't want him thrown out. That wouldn't be nice. You wanted him to be able to resign. But for that, you had to fix up some sort of a deal with Furbank. So you use me. I was the patsy. The new job, all this, was all arranged before you ever saw me. I'm afraid that's pretty much it, Mr. Marker. You were paid to do a job and you did it. When I do a job, Mrs. Holland, I like to know what I'm doing and why. If I told you, you wouldn't have done it. Right. Well, I didn't lie. I just left some of it out. So if I choose not to tell you I want my husband out of the police anyway, what do you care? Do you know what? You two would be a lot better off if you let him fight his own battles. I think you'd better leave, Mr. Marker. Yes, I think so too. You should have done the job you were paid to do and left it at that. Thank you for the advice, Mrs. Holland. Thank you both. Never you been me. Well, I bought you a present. Oh? I tried to give it to you this morning, but you disappeared. <laughs> no glue. Well, it's self adhesive. You pull the backing off. I have. Probably won't rain for a month now. No, never mind. Thanks. My pleasure. Thanks anyway. Well, you've probably not got around to buying it yourself. No, no, probably not. Is your case finished? My clients are leaving town. Oh, good. Sounded more trouble than it was worth. Spoken like a true realist. Well, I am. Mm, of course you are. You're a woman. Mm. Don't you fancy a cup of tea? Well, I'd love one, but um, I've left the shop open. Well, sure. I'll come round tomorrow. Bye. Well, bye-bye. Search warrant. I look here, Frank. Oh, it's Frank now, is it? Oh, just listen. The past couple on. of days it's been threats and warnings I and marker. Told, look, I told you, you take things too much to heart. Just deal in facts. I didn't want to take the Holland case. I believe you. She conned you. Yeah, and you. Really? Hmm. She used me to put pressure on you to do a deal. That's right. Oh, you knew? Well, I was hoping for something like it. All right, come on. I'll buy it. He was poor material. We wanted to get rid of him. Well, you knew he didn't take that money. Pretty sure, but we didn't have enough evidence to sack him. So I let her do it for me. Clever. You reckon that was fair? Well, it was best for him and the job. You've seen him. He's too weak to survive in our line of country. All right, see, and the weak go under, is that it? Can't change the way of the world, Frank. What about that, though? Hmm? From the presents. And the double whiskies and the car. I told you, it was my wedding anniversary. These and the bed warmer were our presents to each other. Funny the things women take a fancy to. Mm, all right, what about the car? And why not? I'm not on the breadline, Frank. I've been paying into an insurance policy for 
what, 25 years now. It's matured and I can buy a new car. We're not all skint, you know. Hey, I'm still waiting to hear about Peyton. Oh, come on now, Percy. Oh, yes, Peyton, yeah. Well, you see, he did me a favour, so I did him a favour. Well, I hope it was worth it. Well, 250, you know. What was it? The proposed route of a security van to the slow trading state. Well, you sold it to him? Certainly. That admission could finish you. <laughs> I doubt it, Frank. Have you read the local paper yet? Slow wages, snatch attempt. Mm -hmm. Five men are helping police with their inquiries following an abortive raid on a security van on the Slough Trading Estate. The police acted on inside information. I wonder where we got that information. And what happens to the 250? Locked up in my safe. Exhibit A, see? So I'm left with egg on my face. Well, that's what you get for following circumstantial evidence. You might have told me. Look. Only three senior police officers knew what I was doing. Security, see? Yeah, Why should it, I tell you? If you said something, anything, I would have dropped the case. Couldn't be done. D maybe not, but it would have saved a lot of trouble if... If, if you if... hadn't believed the worst. St John, chapter 7, verse 24. I'm not with you. Didn't they teach you anything in Sunday school, Frank? You should have been brought up in the valleys, boy. All right, come on, tell me. Judge not according to the appearances? Do you want a cup of tea? Thank you. 